Global Indian Network. Print, TV, events, podcast. Find out more at globalindianseries.com. Then Tony Blair said, let us make Commonwealth a, a, a mechanism for trade, for investment, for business, for private sector. And that's how he asked me to set up Commonwealth Business Council. I was the first director general, we set it up. So that part of my life then was basically working, uh, creating private sector capacity in these countries. Welcome back to the Global Indian Podcast, your official platform for people of Indian origin. Yes, let's face it, we are everywhere. Now, you know, on our weekly show, we plunge into the human experience of being a person of Indian origin, take a second look at the countries we now call home, and tackle the big conversations. Now, we have hosted some of the world's most remarkable individuals, from politicians, heads of states, billionaires to to those on the fringes of societies, actors and activists. In this session, it is my privilege to actually introduce a man who really helped shape the way that we did our work at the Global Indian Series. He is indeed Mohan Kaur. Now, many people know Mohan right the way across the globe. Not only did he head up the prestigious Commonwealth Business Council, but he's a recognized name across politicians, prime ministers, as well as global leaders. You'll find out more about how he actually helped us out over 10 years ago. We're just the pure kindness and the gentleman that he is. Now, if you like what we do and you're also allowed to get involved or even nominate somebody for a story, it couldn't be easy. Simply go to our website, which is www.globalindianseries.com, where one, you can see the entire repertoire of conversations so far, and two, you can also submit your stories and tell us the things that you're interested about. I truly hope you enjoy this remarkable conversation. I'd like to say a massive thank you to all our dear supporters and sponsors, some of which you hear from soon. And again, this is a guy that we have such a debt of gratitude to because he really did make a massive difference to us. And I must say to a lot of countries across the globe, Enjoy this one. Hi, my name is Divya and I'm co-founder of the Global Indian Podcast. Before you get to today's show, I've got a quick favour to ask. If you've been enjoying our conversations, I'd love if you could take just one minute to leave us a review on the platform that you're listening to us on and share our work to friends and family. It helps us out a lot. Word of mouth is the primary way that we grow. Thanks for your continued support. Hello. My name is Daniel Trasa, and I'm Dean of Nova School of Business and Economics in Carcavelos, Portugal, one of Europe's leading business schools. I'm proud to be of Indian origin, and I invite you to discover this podcast, which will look to redefine the impact that Indians and their descendants are doing all over the world. In behalf of Nova School of Business and Economics, I wish you a great 2021. My name is Chitra Stern, and I am a proud Global Indian Ambassador and CEO of Martignal Resorts and Martignal Residences. We pride ourselves on the journeys that define a community, and our developments bring people together. Did you know that over 70,000 people just like us call Portugal home? The Global Indian Journey has brought people together in a meaningful way, and on behalf of all of us at Martignal, we want to thank you for joining us in these remarkable conversations. We look forward to seeing you here in Lisbon post COVID. Have a great day. And just move. Get up 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 and just. You are one of the key people that inspired our journeys because you helped support us nearly over 10 years ago when I was doing stuff for the Daily Telegraph to go into India and provide us with the access points. Now, that doesn't sound like much to you and to a lot of people, but for young entrepreneurs kicking off, that support is huge. And especially more so because we always hear these stories within our own community, how we're on one side, when it comes to business, we're so divided. There's no type of network there. And the other side, people are always very precious about their networks. But you are the total opposite. You kind of came up with open arms, say, 
who is it that you want to meet with? Fine, here's my letter. And at the time you had established this incredible organization, the Commonwealth Business Council. And you kind of let me go along my way and was always a phone call away. So this is my way in my own shortest time to kind of rebalance the books of gratitude to say, it only makes sense if we are going to do justice to the global Indian platform that we have to go back to maybe some of the starting points of the man that actually helped shape some of the stories that we covered. So Mohan, it's a pleasure to have you on here for more reasons than one. I feel like it's coming into a full circle here. And yeah, what's it like to be you? Because for me, you've been this idol that's done this incredible work across the globe. Your accolades is almost reads like a book. You know, you've done over 50 international forums. You've been the personal advisor to prime ministers and presidents. You did a lot of work with Rwanda. You know, you set up, you were part of a board member for ICIC Bank here in the UK. You came into the UK where the UK was incredibly divided and your life has been a testimony of how to build bridges and how to make successful outcomes, not because of the color of somebody's skin, but with the integrity of their personality. What's it like to be you? Well, thank you. Thank you for uh, asking me uh, <laughs> to speak to you and uh, talk to you and have my ex experience. Uh, so, I mean, I, as, an, uh, as you know, I was born in India, in uh, Kashmir, in Srinagar, uh, where it, it's a remote part of the country, but it's the most beautiful part of the country. So uh, from my schooling, then I did my college and I, um, I got a, uh, UNESCO uh, scholarship to come in. Uh, uh, actually, I came after my engineer, I came to London, UK. But when I reached here, I got a call. I mean, I had applied for the scholarship in India and I got a UNESCO scholarship for studying my PhD. And that was on very scientific optimization. It was a modeling. Uh, and that was for University of Paris and Sorbonne. So I had no idea of French. I had nothing, and it was uh, it was it was something very surprising. So from here, I just crossed the channel, and there was a very good scholarship. So I couldn't have uh, said <laughs> no. And uh, and so my journey has been a series of kind of opportunities and accidents which came and I took advantage of that. And uh, I grew and grew and I have been an international, uh, I have been everywhere, about 100 countries yeah. uh, and worked, as you said, with about 50 heads of government. Uh, and I had the opportunity and a good luck uh, to be in that uh, position uh, across the globe. So starting that, the, I, uh, so my experience has been kind of, I learned and grew and learned and God has been great because I have been, I, get, I was given the opportunity. So I, as I said, from here, I went to Paris. So I did my PhD in optimization, one of the best universities in the world, Sorbonne. And um, I was looking at what to do I was very much Indian on the core, uh, the core of mine because I that Indianness was very, 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 very important. Mm. And when I was a student here, uh, the main thing what you would see on the television would be the poverty in India, would be the famine in India. Those days, uh, I'm talking of late '60s uh, and '70s early. So the whole thing, I uh, I was offered the French nationality. I was offered the jobs. Somehow, I thought, no, I have to go back to India and change India. And so I went uh, at that time. Harvard Business School was setting up a, a business school in India called Indian Institute of Management in Ahmedabad. Yeah. And that is the actually India's most premier business school, continues to be there. And I was, uh, I was given uh, the 
I had the opportunity of going there and teaching. So I, uh, I went from, from uh, I was in uh, Harvard Business School was uh, uh, actually managing all that. So we, a uh, group of us went there, uh, young fellows uh, who had done PhDs around here. And we went to I am Ahmedabad and we uh, worked in that. So uh, my journey there started with buying the first uh, uh, what's called time sharing computer, uh, Hamlet Packard, I mean, the whole technology. How old were you then? Uh, <laughs> I was 25, 23, 24, 5. Wow. So I, uh, I, uh, I was very, very, um, yeah, I mean, I was grateful to God. I, I, uh, I was young uh, when I did my PhD and went uh, back. And then I, uh, I, um, uh, uh, but you know, one of my cousins, uh, who also who came at the same time and he was in US he did his PhD at age, age of 18 <laughs> I did at 22 so uh, <laughs> we were a, a bunch of people who are so uh, he he was great I mean, unfortunately he was a big scientist uh, uh, so um, uh, lived there for about 10 15 years but I because I I was in a prestigious institute. I used to do a lot of consulting and work outside. So I was doing with the World Bank. I was doing with UN. I was uh, with from the institute, and uh, working globally was my certainly um, my aim. So, but I thought because I have had my education, I've grown in India. I have to give back to India. So that time, as I told you, French asked, uh, I was offered the citizenship and all that. I said, no, I want to go to India. So the first 10 years of my life, uh, after my uh, finishing my education, was dedicated to India, India's growth, uh, a very, very prestigious institute I was going. This, this uh, was, to put it in perspective, this was at the time where you had the big migration from India going out. Yes. It shows you do the opposite by going in. Yes, yes, yes. From India, uh, from Africa, many of the uh, Indian di diaspora or Indian, that was the time where everybody wanted to go out. Yeah. And uh, there were tremendous opportunities. Somehow I thought, I mean, I did do that. But at that time, at this time, I'm a British citizen. But at that time, taking a French citizen was I was I was sort of not very comfortable. I thought I have to give back to India some. So the first ten out of my profession, I did that, uh, and then I got the opportunity to uh, join uh, the United Nations and the World Bank as an advisor, and uh, I left uh, India. And I went, uh, I did, uh, uh, I was based in US or, but I was advising Malaysia, Singapore, China, the Asian countries, the Philippines, the Sri Lanka. And so that was a tremendous, uh, you know, I was what, 33, 34. I, I was just as a, as a special, we are talking of, we are talking of uh, early eighties, uh, we're talking of, so at that time, early 80s, uh, you know, you are one of the stars and, and such and such opportunity. I mean, such opportunity. Yeah. So I worked in China, I, the, I, do, I went to uh, Philippines. So most of the Asian countries I advised, Sri Lanka, all that, on behalf of the World Bank and UN and all that. Uh, and then, but I was traveling a lot and my family was with me and then we spent time in US and all that. So I wanted to sort of, uh, you know, have a home. And so I came to London in the 80s, right? and as a Commonwealth Secretary, as you know, I was head of the Commonwealth Secretary at that time. It was the head of the governance. I was a director, yeah. a senior. You know? So I got, a, again, a diplomatic position. So I thought 
out of the, all the countries, and I have I had visited till then, and I had uh, studied and uh, lived in uh, the U.S. in France. Other, so I thought London is the best place. I mean, so UK gives me uh, for children. It's a home. Uh, it is. It's actually. Um, it's a place uh, uh, where we are very familiar. We are very much at ease. We look at it. People are great. So I think this is my home. Um, when I when I was a student in France, every three months we used to come to London to eat food because there was no <laughs> Indian food in it. So we used to come here and eat morning to evening, you know, in that city, in that street, because there was no home. But so therefore, the, London was home, kind of home outside home. So that's how I then lived here. The advantage I got at that time, because the Commonwealth was very new, the countries in the Commonwealth countries, as you know, African countries, where there was a lot of Indian diaspora uh, in many of these, uh, Uganda, Kenya, all that. Now, these were very new democracies. They had just got the independence, their room. So they needed a lot of work. And that is why I got the challenge of working with all these leaders to develop the capacity uh, that to do training, to do uh, to uh, do the, a lot of training. I used the Indian expertise for training. I used British expertise. I used others. But I had to 54 Commonwealth countries for very small, with a with a population of 30,000, 50,000 in the Caribbean, uh, and to India, uh, uh, you know. Uh, a billion people. So you have this advantage of meeting so many people and so uh, uh, working in so many countries. If And if you go to the smaller countries, I know, where um, you you make the institution difference, it makes a lot of difference. So I, uh, that was my first capacity building. Then when uh, Mr. Um, when, uh, when Prime Minister Tony Blair took over, uh, the prime ministership, I think he said, uh, by the time, you know, Commonwealth had done a lot of work with the governments, mm -hmm. that is, all the democracies we had done work. The last one was South Africa. And I had the opportunity of, you know, meeting the Nelson Mandela, Nelson yeah. Mandela many times. I, I met him two days after he came out of the prison I mean, I can tell you, I am just looking, uh, you, you would imagine. And he, I took his, he was a, he is a very, very kind and patient man. And if you had shook, shaken hands, he won't leave it. You know? So I gave, you know, I shook hand and he kept my hand at least about five minutes. So <laughs> I tell you, so he says, oh, you are doing very good work. Very nice to meet you. And I was saying, I am meeting Nelson Mandela. <laughs> my, he is not leaving my hand. Eh? Yeah. So I kept my hand. I can tell you at least three to five minutes. He knew what he was doing. Eh? But that <laughs> meant so much to me. Yeah. And, and I tell you, that moment you will never forget. So that was the moment of my life. I mean, it was yeah. joy. And so, and he was a very kind man. I met him several, several times. So, um, so I had the opportunity of meeting you know, such uh, personality. So when I did that garment, so the, then when Prime Minister Blair came and he said, uh, you know, uh, Commonwealth, there was a reach because you know, there is a, one of the things we learned is a lot of Indian diaspora was everywhere I used to yeah. go, uh, and uh, which was good. They were doing good work for that country and it was easier to sort of relate to them. The second thing which came to in 1990s, so now I'm talking, so is that Tony Blair said, let us make Commonwealth a, 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 a mechanism for trade, for investment, for business, for private sector. And that's how he asked me to set up Commonwealth Business Council. I was the first director general, we set it up and I tell you, uh, I uh, so that part of my life then was basically working uh, 
creating private sector capacity in these countries. And one of the things in, when you are working with private sector companies in Tanzania, in Uganda, in um, Belize, in wherever there, a lot of, uh, you meet a lot of Indian diaspora because yeah. they are there. You go to the, you go to Sierra Leone, yeah. uh, such poverty, such that, but here there is an Indian guy uh, and uh, he's doing business, he's doing very successful. Cashew nuts to uh, he's, yeah. he's there. And so he is actually uh, the strength of the co local community. Yeah. So, so that's what I learned for how much we as Indians um, were global citizens. We went out uh, to all kinds of places uh, and made success out of that and kept our culture. If you go to the Uganda and all that, you still see saris and the yeah. women who are there. So that is what I said, oh, there is something strength. I am a global person, but I mean, we have to look at that. There are certain strengths as Indian diaspora, we have certain strength. We, we, get, we get very much used to the local uh, yeah. people, but we will, should not leave our main thing where we came from. Yeah. And the strength that we get through our learning, through culture, through our uh, you know, past, and that is what should remain in there. And so I learned a lot in terms of which was basically 90s and 2000 is basically uh, helped in creating private sector uh, around the world. And that's where we met. So there was for the first time, uh, say Tanzania uh, uh, received an investment for the first time, a global investment uh, for um, from CDC yeah. for setting up uh, uh, an, uh, um, uh, an electric plant, electric um, uh, generator uh, for 500 million. First time. Imagine the country was so the president was there and all that. So it, these were all the movements where the countries got first time investment in them. Then Rwanda was another place. The president was extremely good. So I worked with the president of Rwanda and officials to make, uh, to make Rwanda a Commonwealth country. And okay. then, so we, um, again, we worked uh, with the local businesses. So I uh, had this opportunity of working with local businesses in terms of um, uh, creating a business. But, but you, you fundamentally changed the outlooks of countries by you going in there and creating those mechanisms. Not only did you change the lifestyle of the governments, but every echelon of society there benefited. And here you are as a global citizen who's literally just almost like the movie Story of Pi. You just happen to be in these locations and mystically, you're making this huge change. What has it taught you about identity then? Because your version of Indianness is so vastly different from those many years ago when you're in Gujarat to, at the university to where you are now. Yes, so I think one thing we, we learn now is that uh, as an Indian, you see, one advantage for an Indian it's a big country. It's not a small country. It's a big country. So you you have that identity of largeness of bigger thing. It's not, not an identity. Of, so that helps you because uh, I think you feel that uh, uh, that globe is your. I mean, you are there, uh, and uh, opportunities are global. So my feeling is that came to us. I don't know. It was a education is what Indian, but as an Indian, somehow we, we feel we are global, we are big, we are big. Because even in India, to go from one place to the other, <laughs> uh, you know, many people haven't gone. But so therefore, uh, I, if, you, if you look at it, I was a minority always in every place. So suppose I was in Kashmir, I was a, Kash I'm a, I'm a Kashmiri Pandit, isn't it? 
So I was a minority man in the in the Kashmir, but I I, I was born there. I, uh, uh, my, I, I have that language, but I was minority. So when whenever I went out, so I went to uh, France, I went to U.S. I went. To, uh, I was a I I w wanted to show I am a part of you. I'm a minority, but I I have become. I'm, you know, uh, I've become larger than you guys. I'm a, a larger than la in the sense because of that. Because of your exposure. Yeah. yeah. And so therefore that whole thing, I'm giving this to young people. And so look, take that with you because I think that, uh, I think that what we learned from India is, you know, globe is there. I mean, you guys um, have the opportunities are there. And you just have to take it, just as you said, you made a, a decision on that day, and you uh, you um, uh, you uh, talk to me and uh, whatever I was the inspiration or not, but you made it happen wherever you went. So every uh, Indian, I'm saying, you know, you, look, you have an inherent strength, inherent strength of your thinking, inherent strength of our ancestors. Inherent strength of the learning, inherent strength that India is a big country. So therefore, you know, we have we globe. You know, world is not a is, is not what has to be afraid of. We can go to any part of the world and stay there, or go there, or live there, and be still Indian. Well, what does Indianness mean to you, though? What what what? How do you define that as being in your life? <sighs> I, I mean, I uh, feel, I mean, Indianness is something is very uh, inside that is, is basically certain values, basically how uh, you want to uh, conduct your life and how you want to conduct your life as an individual, as a, as a father, as a person, as a professional. Uh, I think that is important to me as an identity. So when I retired, uh, from the Commonwealth and all that, I I didn't I didn't know I said what do I do? Yes. So I uh, I did my, some consulting uh, on that, and I am still working on certain investment proposal projects in Africa and all that. But I set up this India Professional uh, and Partnership Forum. So I thought uh, that is the time Brexit idea about four three four. Uh, I'm talking about five years, four years ago. So when I met, uh, I, I had the opportunity of meeting, uh, you know, the prime minister here and, you know, other, and uh, he, I mean, he was not prime minister then, he was uh, uh, there, but we, uh, uh, we met many leaders and this whole idea of Brexit was there. Mm -hmm. And then I thought, okay, here is the advantage because India is becoming a very global uh, power or economy is going to be second or third largest economy, or whatever. It's going to be a large economy, and uh, London is a focal point. It's a, it's a place, and we we cannot forget our relation with UK because that is that also has history. You cannot change, though though uh, though we hope that that we would have wished that history doesn't go that way. So what I thought was, this gives an advantage as an Indian uh, to have an influence in the UK. So I said, we'll create a, a diaspora uh, kind of an organization, which is basically, I don't know if you, you are aware about 600,000 professionals, not business one, professionals live in the UK, uh, India. There are doctors, there are nurses, there are uh, engineers, there are lawyers, there are finance managers, they are in media, there are a large numbers. So after Brexit, I thought we should have some stage of uh, so voice, which, which, uh, which should be um, recognized. Represented, yeah. Yes. So therefore, I set up and we had a meeting with the High Commissioner of India and all that. And then I thought at the same time, I wanted it to be high level. So yeah. therefore, uh, I, uh, I, I approached Chatham House 
uh, and uh, and uh, we did the first launch uh, as a policy. Chatham House is the is the uh, premier policy, you know, independent policy uh, 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 institution yeah. uh, in uh, in UK. So we we launched this in Chatham House uh, with. Uh, 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 the idea is to take participation, participate in the uh, you pre uh, uh, in the in the UK wide policy making, uh, so that I, you. Are I, I suppose the question is, Mohan, why do you do it? Because you're at the stage now that is very easy for you to say, I've done enough, and you had a huge impact globally. That is the reality of it. So you're at the stage that you can say. Okay, fine. I'm done. I've already kind of mastered this whole world of business. I can sit back and maybe look at investment proposals, but I don't need to, because your workload has not eased in any way. I don't know where the re word retirement comes from you. I think it's only when you sleep at night. Um, why do it? I I want to I want to die working. I want to die on the way uh, to my job or do or during a week. That is. I don't see myself uh, um, retiring, but the choice, the other choice, it is only the other choice was to sit down and write books and all that. Many people have done. Somehow, I'm not that kind of a person. I'm more, um, I, you know, I'm a, a person who inspires people, who talks to people, uh, who can help the people. I'm a people person. I'm a working man. So I, um, I, though I've written some books, I thought uh, my sitting down and all that I can do that. I'm, I'm, I may do that, but uh, I thought, uh, and if I, uh, I don't have to work. I can sit at home. I can sit here. I can, I can. Uh, I, I had a plan that we will spend uh, five months in India. We'll find it here, and we have. Uh, we have home in different places. We can go, and I don't have to work. But I think I will die if I don't work. <laughs> so my feeling is that if I don't, if I don't remain active, uh, I'm afraid that I will become a vegetable. So therefore, uh, I, I'm just trying to be personal. This is not. Um, so I want. I'm remaining active because I thought I may. Uh, if I stay, I've seen some of my friends and others. Uh, so, for example, we I have a lot of friends here or in India, uh, in different places at high level. Many of them are retired, and yeah. many of them are living in a luxurious uh, kind of apartments or units which they have bought along with others uh, in Dehradun or in other places, or here uh, uh, in uh, south of um, France. And they're saying, stupid, well, why don't you come? I mean, come here and we live. Somehow that's not my life. I mean, I would love, I, I, I would love to have a good a glass of wine. I would like to love to have, spend a, a weekend, all that. But I thought if I do that, I, I'll probably become dull. That's not kind of person I am. Because I, yeah. I have been on the road, you won't believe. Uh, you know, when we had when we had a chogam in Australia, I've been six times or eight times in a year Australia going. On. I I've been um, you know traveling morning to evening in the, from the uh, from from the day I started working. Uh, so even in India, when I was in Ahmedabad. I used to do only three days in Ahmedabad. Three days I was consulting, working with Larson and Trevor, working with other. So I had the, this is a unique opportunity, and I was most lucky to have got that from the beginning, from the day. And yeah. so I was telling you, my when I started working, I mean, the COVID, <laughs> this was stay go. So, but anyway, I got used to it. But yeah. when I'm answering your question, I think I want to do keep on doing something. Well, if you, has, have, a, if has, you have a good initiative, you let me know. I mean, I will, <laughs> well, I'll help you. I'll work with you because I, you know, that is what is uh, life what, for what, me. 
that's what I was going to say. What do you define as life then? Because you're, for me, you're in this remarkable position because you've actually seen the world in which we live in. You know, you've been in over 100 countries out there. You are two generations above me in the sense of everything that you've done. And so therefore you've seen the world, you've seen the changes in the world, you've seen the changes in governments, you've seen the changes in people. For you, what does it all represent? What is a common theme that you've noticed from across the globe? I mean, uh, I mean, people, uh, I mean, whatever may one might say, the world has become a, 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 a better place to live and is becoming a better place to live for everybody uh, relatively. Uh, everyone. So we, as a, uh, I don't know, in 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 Indian thing, uh, you know, you have, you can become a karma yogi or you can become uh, so uh, some four or five uh, young entrepreneurs in India in here. Uh, I I give advice. I help them to become uh, bigger or better. Uh, so I personally feel uh, as an individual one should give, but different people do that. As I said, some people write it up, some people uh, do, uh, 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 but I am more action oriented uh, in terms of um, giving ideas or working with you or uh, up to the last moment, uh, you know, uh, the person who is calling me, it's a technology company. Uh, we are having a presentation today with a large uh, uh, at five o'clock. So they, they are, so uh, you know, I don't have to do it, I can tell you that, but I want to do it. I mean, yeah. uh, I, I want to do it. And I, I think that desire and to, uh, to learn more or to keep doing things is what probably keeps me going from, and uh, does not make me pessimistic. Because when, for example, COVID, you can sit home and read newspaper yeah. or read, see TV and you don't have to do anything more than that. You know, you can have two meals, uh, 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 there's, uh, there's nothing. Uh, young. So what I'm saying that opportunity, so I'm telling the young people, for us, uh, when we were young, I'm talking, as you said, two generations before, when I'm talking of, uh, when was it? Yeah, in, early, in the 60s, when uh, 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 <coughs> there was very little choice in, uh, in, uh, in India. You used to either become a government servant or you become something you do. So the, uh, parents would just, you know, say, but if you tell them, no, I, no, 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 I've got a scholarship abroad. They said, this guy is now gone. So the question is, uh, there were very little opportunities. But I'm telling people, imagine, imagine the opportunities you have now. Every person has opportunities, wherever it is in India, in a village, or uh, it, is, uh, it is here. But at the same time, you become so, so, so um, happy because many people say in a village, in, uh, we are, uh, I'm working with a project where uh, we provide uh, we provide finances at the at the I mean we we ex we we connect people to the banks in the sense get them get them a bank account get them money uh, and they can do transaction they can do it with their mobile or they can do it internet but in a they can do internet or there is a person we there is a person who goes to village um, every week. Uh, or every three days, he collects the money, he goes with them. So these are what I'm saying, connecting. And in those villages, this is a young woman who are yeah. there, or, you know, who, are, is, who, do, who do fantastic work. So what I'm saying, what we learned over the years is, uh, you know, the more we grow, the more the opportunities grow, more the opportunities for a young man or a woman in remote parts of the world uh, that they can take. And some have taken advantage, some haven't taken the advantage, unfortunately. So, but I mean, world is a better place. World has better technologies, world has people, a lot of knowledge. Uh, and uh, so um, 
Uh, so we we have to be positive, uh, whatever yeah. may be the case, and that is the only way we can uh, make this world a better place. I think as an Indian, we are a positive people. We should play a positive role in the world. Um, in wherever we are, in- I agree. I think I think we are as a community the natural social custodians for the planet. We're we're picked up. We're across the globe in so many different numbers that is unbelievable. We've hit to the high echelons of politics, through to business, through to social work. We're there, and yet there's this unifying thing that we always want to give back to society. Yes. I think for me, Mohan, it's you know, I the reality is it's it's also the fact that you take that time because as much as it's there, the reality, there's a lot of businesses out there. There's a lot of people that have done really well, but they don't necessarily share. And when I mean share, it doesn't mean finances, but it's advice and experience and network. And that's where I find you this intriguing individual, because again, over 10 years ago, you shared, you're very open. And that had a huge impact on us, had a huge impact on the work that we then carried out. So I think there's also that mindset with you, which makes a spectacular difference, especially with the people that you touch. Thank you. And that would be my message. And that would be my way. Finance is the last thing I can share, but everything else I can share. (laughs) Absolutely. I'm sure you're going to agree. What an incredible human being. Mohan was one of those guys that I saw growing up and thinking, he is a person that I would like to emulate. At that time, in my 20s, he was running, obviously, Commonwealth Business Council, doing extraordinary things, rubbing shoulders with heads of states, meeting with ministers and global CEOs, and doing what he does. Little did I know, over 10 years later, I was following exactly in his footsteps. He is such a remarkable individual that is so generous at heart. It is unbelievable. And he is, in my mind, a real custodian to the values of the society that we would love to see bring forward in terms of brotherly love and people sharing and actually uniting in a common cause for the greater good. Now, if you loved this episode, I'm sure you're going to love next week's episode. But if you'd like to support us, well, it couldn't be easier. All you simply have to do is like, subscribe and share because with your help, we get to build the world's greatest living encyclopedia of people just like us.